You gotta actually hit record before you start your out your intro, Andrew. I knew that. I knew that. I didn't just do a full minute's worth of intro without hitting the record button. No, who would do that? Not me. No. No. Hey, how's it going? I am the Sanguium, and welcome back to Create Above and Beyond. So last episode, we worked on the... Radiant Refinery, I have, I, I have decided to call it just now. We didn't call it that at all last episode, but I just came up with the name this episode. So, uh, you're welcome. So the Radiant Refinery is up and running, except it's not receiving a lot of materials because that TNT needs to get to crafting. And I've been doing a couple odd jobs off camera. For example, I went to a nearby jungle and grabbed some cocoa beans to grow for brown dye because I need brown fairy lights and I keep putting it off so I thought you know what I'm gonna do it so now you can see I have a couple things I've used up all of the brown fairy lights because I did say I needed them so I used them but I also made some orange and yellow fairy lights and I got a bunch more gray fairy lights back from the machines that I replaced with uh brown fairy lights and as you've noticed i'm making more brass it's uh yeah just making some brass so this episode we are going to be working on the room in the far back of the invar factory to uh make a room where we can craft the inductive mechanisms at long last i'm just checking my uh, supplies here let's grab another stack of factory dots and throw those in there. So this next room is all the way in the back over here. As you can see, I died in this room at one point because I fell from up there. And actually, this thing up here requires brown fairy lights and has needed it for a while now. I wonder if you can see, there's some stone blocks up there, up on the platform. That is where the cannon was supposed to place brown fairy lights, but it didn't. So that does remind me, I, uh, I gotta go make more brown fairy lights, how about that? Alright, so welcome to the top of the platform. There we go. Now this platform is properly lit. Alright, that's more like it. Nice and lit up. This death beacon's kind of getting annoying though. Is there a way to get rid of that? Remove. There's actually a lot of death beacons, apparently. I died a lot around here. Let's... Let's actually clean this up a little, huh? Oh my god, I think I know where this is. This is the cave. I think this is the mine shafts. Oh, wow. You know what? Let's leave those there for... For memory's sake. There we go. Now... What kind of design do we want this room to have, huh? It's kind of tricky, because really the only design I can think of that would be the most suitable is just a simple floor. Like, no, like let's just not have any void at all. Let me just start placing things and see what happens. How's this look? I think that's okay. We can just have like a little something here. Something to give the room more shape. I think that's ultimately why I want holes to the abyss, is so that way... Like, uh, there's there's just more shape to the room, instead of it just being a big square. I've considered having a hole in the middle of the room, but I don't really want that. Also, I'm sure you have all noticed I have portal frames in my inventory. I just now realized that, uh... Yeah, this place has quite the... Shall we say... Even... Number of everything. I kind of wanted this thing to be in the center, but... Hold on, I could still make it work. What if we just made it off to the side and put a bunch of mumbo-jumbo on the other side? In that case, I wonder if it would look better on the right side. Having a portal in this room will make it easier to go between here in the brass building, as well as to the nether. As I intend to put the another one of these portal frames in the nether. Alright, it's not quite done, but... We have something here, at least. Put a torch in here to light it up. So let's think, what kind of stuff are we doing in this room? Well, to answer that, let's look at this. Liquefied logic, how curious. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a calculation. We want this. 
Invar machine. What can we make with the Invar machine? Well, you can only smith it into a compression dynamo. You can stone cut it only into Invar pipe module. But you can craft it into all sorts of things. Reagent extractors. The induction smelter will be important. Alchemical imbuer. Redstone furnace. Centrifugal separator. Fractioning still. If I recall, you need a fractioning still to make, uh, like power pipes, which we will be using a lot of in the near future. A pulverizer. Phytogenic isolator. Now, I believe this is very important, because that's what allows us to make, uh, obtruse mechanisms, I believe. The magma crucible. The reason I'm looking at all this is because I'm trying to think, figure out what kind of contraptions we can fit in this room. But unfortunately, I'm not sure, so I think we're just going to focus on this corner over here and build, you know, the thing that we need here. Let me actually, you know what, let me finish building the rest of the room first. I just realized I, I didn't even finish the room. Okay, there we go. Now, everything is in place. So next, let's see. Let's go to the next room over and see where we can bring that belt through. Yes, yeah, this one. Fascinating, there just so happens to be a cave here. That makes it a little easier. Yeah, it's right against the wall right here. That'll do. Oh, but I didn't bring any equipment, so I gotta go back up. Oh, I don't have any shafts and other useful things. Ugh. All right, got some deployers. And, um, do I have belts? No. Just grab a bunch of belts. Put them in here. I have andesite casing on hand. I could use more of these. More of these. I need to make more gearboxes soon. Ah, oh, jeez. Shoots! Shoots! I need more shoots. Um, let's make that chromatic resonator. I think it needs a ruby and a sapphire. Oh, it needs two! Oh, two. Alright, arming the deployer three. Alright. Yeah, we got this part now. However, um, let me see. Submit. Let's just grab this unbreakable resonator. And, uh, I also went ahead and paid the 11 gold coin for this, but, uh... How do you make a flash drive, anyway? You need a logic processor and a cobalt ingot. Whoa, that looks a little bit more uh, involved, doesn't it? All right, so let's see. The belt here or on the floor? Where, where do we want it? I guess that is the question. Let's put it here on the floor. So this is where the actual uh, crafting is going to be done. Right here. So let's give that to you. Actually, yeah, this is a little low now, isn't it? Um, well, this should still work. Now I just need to get them through here. All right, wow, there's like a whole cave back there. So now let's put one of these here. That here. A gearbox here. And then these here. It's a little slow, though. Hmm. We could fix that, but, uh, it would involve me going all the way back to the surface, so I'll be right back again. Okay. Slap that there. Let's pick that up. We don't need that here. Now, how's it looking? 224. That's a little better. Let me light up this cave a little. I saw a skeleton in here a moment ago. Where did it go? Oh, there's copper in here, too. I'll have to maybe come through here later. All right, yeah, skeleton. Check it out. He's not hurting me anymore. Want to know why? I finally got enough 
uh, skeleton ribs to make a skeleton charm. So, uh, random shots to the back of the head are no longer an issue. Put those down. There we go! That's done! It's done! All we have to do now is head on over here and get those radiant coils to start, uh, filling up those deployers. Alright. Okay. I don't think there's enough to do a whole stack of precision mechanisms, but we'll throw a whole stack down. Inductive mechanism! We now have that being created. Now we just have to make an invar machine, which, uh, we do have things up in the base for that, so let's pick some of these up. Alright, we have enough for four machines. So, uh, not bad, not bad. Let's go, uh, try it out, huh? We just so happen to have exactly four Invar casings, which is interesting. Chapter 3 complete! There it is! Congrats! Inductive mechanisms will now be generated passively. This opens the door to exciting uh, new technolo technological and magical exploits. Once you are happy with the assembly line, head on back to the overview. There will be new options to explore. Nice. Got some rewards. Some rewards. Ooh, we have enough for two more machines. Wow. Alright, so let's go back to um, overview. A new energy unit joins the ranks. The production family for silicon will involve an interplay of thermal induction machinery and the familiar kinetic components. Between flux and stress, a peculiar innovation in laser technology will be required to produce some of the ingredients involved. After hitting the check mark above, the fourth chapter of the factory guide will become accessible from the quest sidebar. Alright. Into the box. And real quick, let's take a look at this. You'll find that the newly discovered laser setup has other interesting capabilities. Behind a bit of science and experimentation lies a way to transmute seemingly unrelated materials between another. The demand silicon element is one of them, but which is its counterpart? After hitting the check mark above, the alternative fourth chapter of the factory guide will become accessible in the quest sidebar. Might as well. And now this one. The prospect of teleportation alone might be reason enough to explore that mysterious end dimension. In researching the required technologies, you will find that your hard-earned silver suddenly finds a second use. After hitting the check mark above, the additional quest located in the third chapter will be revealed. Alright, we got some more things here now. Let's see what else we can do here. Not the end. Secrets of teleportation lies behind the end. Well, I went there already. Insert coin. Alright, yeah, let's let's just take a let's take a step back and just look. Set aside some ender dust from your reactor. In case your supply is bottlenecked, you can use uh, ender pearls too. The I think the TNT is the bottleneck. We're gonna have plenty of extra ender dust, so we can in fact uh, split that off. I think. All right. So yeah, melt it down. Turn it into brick. Turn that into. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. We kind of already know how to do that process. Now uh, let's take a look at into the box. Okay, at first glance, this doesn't look as chaotic as Chapter 3. Snowball machine? New Invar technology makes forming snowballs out of water quite a simple process. Perhaps a few should be set aside for our next unannounced visitor. Unannounced visitor? Blizz? We need Blizz? That's like a... Like a frost blaze. And this is the Blaz, right? What on earth is even going on here? Okay, alright, let's... Let's see what this is. It's like a periodic table here. As an alternative, more risky approach to a refined silicon resource, laser alchemy can provide an obscure yet rewarding new path of progression. Discover the secret codes of each Ragent class in order to learn about the recipe of Chaos Catalysts. Once found, the Chaos Catalyst can not only transmute a material into silicon, 
but potentially create other valuable resources from the most trivial ingredients. It actually just occurred to me, uh, did I read this? I did not. The next target will be printed silicon, as one of two known ways to obtain it. The assembly line will move items, fluids, and energy in and out of the new and rather compact Invar machinery. Much like previous chapters, a few new material sources or shipments are required. Yeah. Okay, alright, I, I think I get it. Although, until then, we're gonna focus more on this, I believe. I kinda wanna speedrun this a little bit. And before we get a setup actually working, I kinda just wanna make one of these here machines so that we can turn on these portals before the episode's over. You know, just so that way, when it comes to making more machines in the Invar factory, I could just hop in here, and then BAM, I'm at the Invar factory. I don't have to make that long trek anymore. So what do you say, huh? Let's let's start, go ahead and speed run the obtruse mechanism a little bit. Now, uh, all right, all right, let, let, let's actually real quick, um, let's insert that coin. Take the coins and throw them into the, your smeltery. Watch out, this is an irreversible process. Cast them into sub brick. Fire up your induction smelter for two rounds of processing. First off, refine your silver ingots with ender dust and poise bushes. And finally, upgrade some of your inductive mechanisms. Okay. After your flawless encounter with the ender dragon, make your way to the gateway and travel to the outer islands. Here, you should be able to find the poise bushes necessary for uh, the creation. Thanks to inductive technology, you have a, the option to replace poise bushes passively. You should require a steadier and more convenient supplier of ender, enderium. And this is why I said earlier the phytogenic insulator looked curious. So we need inductive uh, thing. The in, induction smelter. Yeah, we need the induction smelter and the phytogenic insulator. So what do these things require? A blast furnace, redstone flux coil, invar gear. How much invar do we even have? I don't think we have a lot. We have exactly four. We have enough for one gear. Great. Fortunately, we do have some nickel lying around. Luminium gear. Energize close to We need a fractioning still for aluminum ingots to make that one thing. Oh my gosh. So we need a fractioning still as well. A, which also requires Invar gears. Okay. So we need 12 Inga, uh, Invar ingots. Got it. Which means we need 12 nickel. And I think that means we need 48 uh, iron ingots here. So now we have that nickel compound. What do we do with it? We blast it. Let's throw it here. We're gonna have an automatic setup for this in the Invar factory, by the way. Whoa! Alright. That is a lot of, of, of stuff there. I didn't realize it was non-stackable. And now we gotta press it a bunch. This is gonna take a hot second. Two very boring minutes later. Alright, finally, that's done. Okay, turn all of those into gears. Alright, we have an induction smelter. There's that. Now this one, we just need that aluminum. 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 Which we get by having energized glowstone in here. Here, let's go to the basement. Slap some of these things down. That's not right. Okay. Let's make a let's let's make a furnace real quick. We'll make a simple one. Just a just a sterling dynamo. You know what? I don't even have to make one. I'll just grab the one from the anisite warehouse. So it says here it needs energized glowstone. You have to use a magma crucible. That's more Invar gears. Oh! Oh, come on. And it takes 80 redstone flux. Goodness gracious. At least it's uh, one glowstone equals one bucket. Looks like we're using all four of our Invar machines for this one. On the bright side, uh, after we're done this, we'll have a bunch of Invar machines that we can just use for anything, really. 
Okay. Magma Crucible. There it is. But yeah, the Magma Crucible looks to be um, an alternative to the smeltery. Like, instead of needing a smeltery to melt everything down, you could just use a Magma Crucible. Alright, it looks like this is going to take a very long time. How many buckets can this thing hold? Exactly eight uh, buckets, so... I don't know, I guess we ought to just... Let it continue until it's ready. Alright, I guess uh, we'll just do some stuff in the background, huh? Hey, yeah, hey, you know what I can yeah, I can point out to you? Check out what I got here. Create set... Uh, buddy metal. Take a look at all these cards, I bet you're wondering where they came from. Well, between last episode and this one, I checked out all of the, like, uh, Farmer's Delight cards that I got from the silo over there, and thought, I mean, I have all these extra cards, I got like 16 of, of all these cards, and I don't know what to do with them, so I just thought, alright, I'll just, uh, throw them in the crushing wheels, grind them up, turn them into create packs, and what do you know, I got enough cards for the metal. I should try making some... Buddy card packs for Farmers to Light, because despite the fact that I just said I have a lot of them, for some reason, I am missing one card, and it doesn't seem like I am able to get them. And it gives me Nourished 1, which sounds interesting. It makes me think it's like a, a hunger type of thing. So the Fluxo Magnet, yeah, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just looking through this book. Now that I have Invar Technology, this thing will kind of tell me a little bit about the stuff. But I recognize this here, Fluxo Magnet, from the chapter list. It says it's a tool that uses redstone flux to pull nearby items into the player's inventory. It can be charged and augmented in the Tinker's Workbench, which, uh, I've noticed is not a thing. Um, how does that work? Here. If the contraption will have to route the magnets from the cart unloader carts. Oh my gosh. Oh no, no, don't pin it. Don't pin it. Oh my gosh. And trophy charge. This is gonna be a headache to figure out, I think. How are we looking over here? We got two buckets! And yeah, energized glowstone is kind of a, a an up-facing thing. Don't know why. That's just how it is. What all can you do with aluminum? Make these aluminum rails, whatever that means. Aluminum glass. Aluminum plates. Do plate things. Increases fuel efficiency for the dynamo. Huh. Okay. We're almost done with getting the energized glowstone. It did just now occur to me, though, that we kind of need power for this thing. And, uh... Hmm... I'm thinking we just grab some lava, have a lava generator here. I'm hoping that'll be fine. It should be fine. It should be fine. Oh, come on. Come on. It's done. It's done. It's basically done. Come on. There we go. Okay. Pour the remainder of that in. And that's our last Invar machine, too. So this thing can grow other things with it. I'm assuming the bone meal is optional. It can grow a ton of things. They can duplicate the rose bush. Yeah, you know, get get logs so that you don't need a tree farm. You can grow the wither rose, which is uh I'm excited about that part. Oh look at this. A poise bush creates a tall poise bush. A tall poise bush makes a poise cluster. And a poise cluster makes Ender slime and a poised bush. Huh. Okay. This thing can accept water as well. Um. Okay. Let, let's let's do some experimentation then. Just in case bone meal is important, I have the bone meal. Let's put that in here. Uh, we're gonna need this. We'll put it not there there. Give it some power. Now... Can I just right-click on this? 
I can! I wasn't sure how that would work. Whoa, that's slow. That is very slow. Is that what the bone meal's for? If I put bone meal here... Is that faster? If that's faster, I, I, I can't tell. So it makes a poise cluster. And it consumes the bush. I... For some reason, it didn't cross my mind that it would consume the bush. And it makes more... stuff out of that. This is a thousand more. We make slime out of it, which is an interesting byproduct. The bone meal was not consumed, which is interesting. What can I do with that slime? Can I just use it as normal slime? I can. A fun little alternative to blood. Okay, ender slime ball, and three poise bushes. So now I can use these to make more of these tall poise bushes. That seems awful tedious. I wonder if there's another way to do it, like bone mealing? I don't know, but I'm at the very least going to make more of these poise bushes. I have no choice. I have to, because I need them to make the endernium ingot stuff. So this is gonna take a while, so uh, be right back. You know what, let's go ahead and melt some of that silver. We need 144 coin to make 16 ingots. All right, that should give us what we need on the silver department. Hmm, you know all that waiting I had to do? I decided to uh, experiment a little bit with this. This seems far more efficient. It requires bone meal though, but we have a passive supply of that being made over in the basic material production section. I'm sure we could use some of that to bone meal some poison moss. Look at that, I got 16 now. That's exactly how much I needed. Alright, now we just need some of this ender dust. And since I'm here, how are we looking on TNT? Not bad. We're about a third of the way there. Not bad at all. I have been experimenting with the induction smelter and have some rich slag here. Using that rich slag, we can make something called uh, Phyto Grow. Which seems like it could work as a better catalyst than bone meal. Um, let's see. Ender dust. Throw it in there. We don't need this here catalyst, so I'm curious what would happen. Let's just throw that in there. It uses only 10,000 redstone flux, so... Supposedly there should be enough. And we're about to get our first enderium ingot. How lovely. What the hell? Wait a minute. Oh, it needs four! Oh! Okay, we have enough enderium to make eight obtruse mechanisms. And in doing so, we'll have enough obtruse mechanisms to make one enderium machine. And we can make that portal controller. So let's grab a diamond. One of these. There it is! Enderium machine! Pop that in here. Portal controller. Bam. We can now activate that portal that we built oh so long ago. And I went ahead to put a magmatic dynamo down here. It's on! And gaining power. It's interdimensional too, which means that we can go to the nether using this portal. Unfortunately, there are no other portals to link to because this is the only one that's on. I'm hoping it's not too stressful on the system. I kind of want to go look at the tank. Doesn't look like it's that bad. It's going down a little bit, but I imagine when the power maximizes, it'll uh, use a lot less power. I guess that color's okay. Um, I want a color like that. Like, give it like a brass kind of look. <sighs> but I'm having trouble. Um, you know what, let's just keep it like this. This is fine. Alright, I have another portal controller. Let's go ahead 
put that into the portal down in the Invar factory. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It ain't much use if it ain't powered, so let's bring this with us. Here it is. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of these gaps. I think this is enough. Oh, I'm one short! Actually, no, I'm a lot short. There's a ceiling here. Oh, gosh. Actually, yeah, I'm six short. Hold on, if I recall, you don't actually need the back of the portal for it to work. Yeah, you don't need the back of it. I'll just fill that in later. I just like having a back because it's, you know, looks like void. So let's put, put that here. Okay. Let's give it lots of fuel. We're going to need to give it lots of fuel. Dial. Real quick, let's... Let's change its name to Invar Factory. Nice! Hey, look at that! We have portal technology now. Let's actually change this as well. So now we have a quick way back and forth to the big brass building. And real quick, I kind of want to test how much energy this uses. Oh, it's constant! If I close the portal, it stops, though. So if I hit dial once... ...and go through, it turns off. Okay! That's pretty nice. You can just dial once. Alright, in that case, let's charge this up to, comp to, to be as full as possible. And I think we're gonna leave this thing here. And just make another sterling dynamo for the andesite building. But yeah, now we have a fast way into the factory. We don't have to take the lift so much anymore. All right. Not only that, but we just have passive inductive mechanism production now. We just gotta provide it with the appropriate uh, precision mechanism. And I mean, that's... That's pretty huge! So next episode, I guess we ought to figure out some sort of power situation, I guess? Because, as you can see, a lot of these Invar machines require a lot of redstone flux. And now that we can make Signalum, using the fractioning still with destabilized redstone, we can make these Invar flux ducts, which can transport power around. So now we can make a concentrated, like, center that just does nothing but makes redstone flux constantly and stores them in these uh, redstone flux cells which can hold uh, about a million redstone flux and can transfer a thousand redstone flux per tick which is pretty good. So I guess next episode we'll work on making that stuff and figure out what to do with it. We could put it in this room. Yeah, we could put like a generator underneath the floor here because I kind of want to make inductive mechanisms in here as well. Like, maybe we could have the poise bush in the corner being grown using water and redstone flux. And now that we can kind of forcibly craft uh, obtruse mechanisms, we can make ender chests. Yeah, if we put this on a smithing table with a chest, we get those, these ender chests. And, then, and see those, uh, it's kind of hard to see from here, but do you see those three white little uh, slots on the top of the chest? You can dye those different colors and have multiple frequencies and channels of ender pocket chest inventory things. Yeah, we can put silver coins in there and have it just get melted into ingots. Like, that's pretty cool. There is actually something else we might end up doing differently though, because uh, everything I just said we we're gonna do next episode, yeah, that might have to take a back seat because I just now realized this room over here is going to be the, like, the metal room. Like, we're going to make a bunch of metals in here, including Invar and silver. We could just do the silver melting straight in that room over there, though, since that seems to be the only reason you would need to melt silver. But at some point, we have to get in here and start having a passive production of all the metals. Because this, this room's going to make every metal that we would need. It would make copper, zinc, and uh, 
lead, and I got a pretty fancy contraption in mind to make it happen. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing, and remember, the Wasteland is watching. See ya.